So uh, first of all, thank you so much, Malashridi, for talking with us. This is a very casual kind of an interview session that we are doing with a lot of individuals who are into education, maybe directly connected, maybe not directly connected, but somehow we are taking their life experience so that uh, those who are going to watch the interviews, somehow they get some kind of an idea, help, so that they can integrate that in their own life. And uh, the series has been uh, uh, very, uh, very interesting, a lot of learnings. From my perspective, I, can, I have heard a lot of things which are uh, for the first time, uh, a lot of insights which, on which I can ponder upon. But in this interview, since we have done this story on David and Neil Bach School, I would, and you have been a part of that school, I would like to uh, take that story ahead. So, uh, can you please share about your life, how you got associated with Neil Wag and David, and then from then, uh, my curious mind will ask some questions after okay, that. Sure. Uh, I was, uh, I had just, f you know, finished my uh, BSc and I had, I was looking for a job and I, I started working in a publishing house called Oxford University Press. They were into publishing, uh, of course, uh, you know, uh, academic books as well as uh, children's books. Uh, not stories so much as much more of like textbooks. They had a big, big unit like that. Um, and I was employed there as a filing assistant, very small, lowly job, but the place was great fun to work in because there was no apparent hierarchies. And I was actually, I was, I found that filing was very interesting. And to this day, that interest in filing has helped me, in fact, maintain a massive archive that we have of the theatre group that I belong to. But that apart, I was in, I used to read letters and file them. And there I, there was a letter from David and naturally his writing was very striking. And I said, wow, somebody actually uses a pen, you know, like a quill pen to write and that's great. And bamboo, you know, shaped, because you could make out. So I just asked about who is this author. And at that time, the textbooks had not yet started. You know, this was, I think, he was doing the English readers, spring readers. This was possibly spring readers two that had come. One had already been done, which I saw, and I was very impressed with it. And uh, he would send his manuscripts and the sketches and everything. And they were really fascinating. And I realized that, okay, here is somebody who is approaching the language learning totally differently. I mean, it was evident to me. I wasn't trained or anything. But I was always interested in children and learning and, you know, trying to see, I mean, I wanted to be a teacher ever since I was a small child, but that doesn't mean a thing. Children want to become many things. I also wanted to go to Andromeda Galaxy, which of course I haven't and I never will, but that apart, you know, so I thought, I mean, it's one of those things, but I didn't do B. Ed. Uh, because I couldn't do it and uh, I realized that okay this is great fun so when his letters would come and the stuff material would come I was really interested in that, that the person who was looking after his textbooks um, David's books was the uh, educational editor called Christopher Stocks and I became friends with him and I asked him tell me more about this man and so he told me about Neil Bagh. by then Neil Bagh had just about started this must have been 1974 it, it hadn't, I mean, it hadn't gone on in a big way, but it had just started. So he knew a little bit about it. He told me a little bit about him and all. And I said, oh, he has a school. I'd like to go there just to visit, you know. I mean, I had, didn't even know that he had a... a general uh, curiosity. Huh. So he said, okay, let's see, you know. But then soon, a few months after that, David was coming into Delhi. And I got to know naturally because he was coming to the to the publishing house and whatever they did with their with the editors and all uh, by then I was I got to know that he was opening a, a kind of a training for uh, people who would like to work with children uh, I am hesitating to use the word teachers because uh, the way I look at my time in Neil is it was a place where I learned how to help children learn uh, rather than where I learned how to become a teacher. I think there is a emphasis in the approach to education in that, I mean a shift in the change in the emphasis. So I was very curious and interested in that and so Chris said why don't you just meet him and he is not advertising or anything, it's a small place so he'll just meet people and find them. So David and I met and we 
loved each other from the beginning. So it was great fun. I said, okay, I'm very interested, but I'm thinking maybe I should do my B.Ed. and then come. He said, no, on the contrary, don't ever do your B.Ed. because then you'll have to unlearn whatever you've learned. So you come just like that. So we talked about it and he wasn't sure, wanted to know if I was serious about it because it meant at that time going for one year away from Delhi, far away, which was, you know, like many hundreds of kilometers down. in a village area which had no electricity or running water and uh, amenities of a place like delhi uh, so he was not sure you know whether i would and i think he figured that i that i'd enjoy it if he had any doubts he never shared it directly but uh, he said okay i'll think about it and let you know and then he wrote to me and said yeah it's on so this was you know like i think end of 74 by then and it took a few months for the whole thing to you know dates and all to and then i still remember just the other day i was sending a message to all the people i met that day that it was on the 25th of june that we landed in nilbag from um, from bangalore okay. yeah so i mean i went to bangalore by train and from there you know i and so did the others two people of course came from nearby from bangalore and one from mysore and indra came from uh, madnapalli so the train part i was the only one who actually did and we met up at the bus station in in um, in bangalore uh, kalasipalliam i think it, it's called and we came to nilbag and it was uh, actually <laughs> the fact that there was no electricity and uh, no running water and no amenities like that was actually something that it was never a problem partly because i think we were all young and uh, it didn't really matter today maybe it will uh, you know because one is older and therefore used to a certain kind of style uh, certain amenities not style but amenities what i remember the first thing was that we went in a bullock cart okay very very uncomfortable but great fun and it was right in the middle of nowhere Uh, with nothing that was you know remotely cityfied and it was just nothing but greenery all around it was kind of in the evening so uh, there were fields we could see a little bit of water in between the trees and there were lots of lots of trees and when we went reached the place the hostel as it was called there were lots of people there to welcome us so the uh, local uh, i mean the parents of the kids who studied there and a few other locals they had come to meet these students from who had come from different places and they were going to stay there and that was set up naturally language was a problem but some of them knew how to knew english and so that they spoke to me in english but because many of them also knew kannada uh, and of course they all spoke telugu then uh, except for priya at that time known as patsy we uh, she knew some kannada I and mean, she could follow i followed nothing neither telugu nor kannada but i was english was the only language and there were some people who did speak english and i was very surprised to see that and i wondered why but whatever and the kids also did which i knew they would because david had told me about it and how they were teaching language learning and all so that was the first day and nothing there was petromax and uh, there was water in a you know there was a little uh, i mean stored water somewhere and everything was it was different but it was not uh, alien and it was not difficult and it was very accessible in many ways and that's how and of course we were told that you know there are the only thing to be scared of or to be aware of are snakes and what is the word for snakes that was the first word we were taught pambu right and uh, what to do when it comes and you know how to be care- you know what to do to be careful so on and so forth that's what we were told apart from that next day you know we would start work and all that anyway so we were i don't very much remember the first evening when we had dinner and everything there was somebody who who's actually looking after the space for us and she would cook and clean and everything and actually without her we wouldn't have been able to really you know do our work that was the first day and very soon the school was again it was i when i went there i didn't think that it was anything unusual not to have exams to have learning at your own pace to be able to shift from one group to the other was something that 
I didn't think was surprising because uh, in any case somehow you know not because my education was a, had been unhappy on the contrary I went to a wonderful school and I had a great experience there but somewhere along the line you know I had developed a sense of not getting into the competitive business of education of learning being beyond the textbook this is something that happened Partly I think because of the school I was in and they didn't mind that people didn't get necessarily high marks but they were otherwise interested in learning. I had very good, some very good teachers especially in science and language and uh, which was, this was a very ordinary school in many ways but there were some very interesting programs there which again the arts had come in which I thought was very natural uh, because of my schooling when I realized later that it wasn't because not everybody did that. And subsequently, uh, you know, we, it, there was a three language for, uh, program in that school. So there were children who went to English medium, Hindi medium and Bangla medium. And you could also learn Sanskrit. So the three languages were not like another Indian language totally, but it was the ones that were current in Delhi. Even so, it was a school which was much more progressive than what was around us and I think that somewhere shaped me, books shaped me, literature shaped me and the fact that my mother who had no pedagogic uh, background at all, instinctively I suppose if I can use a most unscientific word, uh, she uh, did the right things. So what I learned later through educational theory of how to uh, you know encourage children what is how to give them space what is the meaning of discipline what is the meaning of a child being self-reliant it's something that she did or on the question of punishment or exams she was remarkably remarkably modern you know I mean I had I don't think at that time I knew anybody else now when I think about it at that time she was my mother so that was the it was fine I mean I she was like that, that's all. I was hardly comparing her with other people. Right. But when I went to college, I realized that, okay, all mothers are not like this. The fact that she gives me space, that she doesn't say, where were you? What were you doing? The, the push that, maybe because she didn't push me, which is why I didn't become an IS officer, or good for me then. I mean, that somebody can turn around and say that she didn't push you enough, you have no ambition, possibly. But she gave me space and she, helped me develop deep sense of self-respect and respect for others and the fact that you know learning is not limited to a course because she herself was an avid reader and even though she was a very again a very ordinary class 3 employee a clerk in a government office she was hugely well read in the three languages that she knew and she was equally well read in English literature Bangla literature and Hindi literature and till the very end of her life I mean she would you would just have to ask her, okay some writer's name such and such a, a character what was the name of the story she'd have it like that she was better than Google in many ways truly she was amazing last couple of years her memory failed her that that, that yeah, yeah that, that's that's a different matter but she was it was amazing really and I uh, took it all as normal no. because that should be normal yeah. It's not unusual, but of course I realized Later that. Later on, you reflected on that. No, I I realized that you know she was remarkable in many ways without being remarkable, oh. uh, without you know in, in her own way she did what she believed in. So uh, she, this this sense of again self discipline, I can't remember ever her telling me, do your homework, or you have to come first. I do not remember ever doing that ever. I mean, for her ever, ever telling me. And if I failed in something, uh, okay, so let's find out why you failed and then you do better next time. That's all. It was, there, was never, there was never pressure. So I think somewhere, you know, what learning should be uh, is something that she must have affected me. All this I realized later. At that time, it was just the usual thing, you know, like it always Very happened. Much, yeah, uh, but she's mind my mind mother, mind. so she's, that's nah. how she will be. Yeah. But. So when I went to Neelbagh, I mean, my, both my parents, you know, they had absolutely no issue about my going. 
uh, David insisted, no, you must ask them, you must prepare them, everybody will. I said, I don't know why you people are saying this. I'll just tell them. Matter ends. And that's how it was. Okay, of course, they wanted to know where I was going, naturally, the full address and everything. But the fact that he was an author with the place where I worked, that was enough. That was enough credibility that he wasn't going to, you know, um, do anything bad to us, yeah. that we we'll learn something. Fine, so that was great fun. It was initially for a year when we went to Nilbagh, but soon after six months, I think, the first winter that came, in 75 winter, uh, it was a kind of, we arrived at it mutually. I think David sort of must have realized it before us, but he, we, I know we were talking about it, and we said that, you know, there's no way we can finish, there's so much to learn that we can do this in another four or five months till the next summer. So maybe we should stay another year. And that's when, you know, he said, yes, that's a very good idea. And he sort of, you know, expanded the thing. Ah, and in the second year... it was one year, later yeah. it became a two-year two year thing. thing yeah. yeah. And in the second year, Amukta, who was already... Uh, she was a trained Montessori person. She was working in Chennai. She also joined us. So from four people, we became five students. But of course, there was also the teacher, uh, Usha, who was teaching in the Nilbagh school, she would also be part of the most of the assignments and the sort of sorts of things we did, except of course the studying part of it in the evening, which she did uh, on her own in her own house. And Sandra, who was all, also there, uh, she was uh, working as David's uh, you know, secretary. She wouldn't come to classes or anything. Maybe classes, I mean the sessions we had there, but she was around and very much part of whatever we were doing. So, what we, we had a fairly uh, structured schedule in one sense uh, in Nilbagh, but that structure didn't seem like a imposed structure. There was a f enough flexibility in it. Of course, the time that was the school time, whatever it was, you know, I think it was 8.32, whatever, uh, that time had to be in the school. So, we all went to the school and we, uh, First, we observed David and Doreen and Usha, to, you know, taking the classes, and then slowly we started joining in. But first three months, that's what we were doing. Language was something that was clearly very important, like the, the, the language learning part of it. So one exercise that we were doing was we were teaching each other uh, our mother tongues, uh, and uh, we were using different methods. So I was teaching them Bangla in one method, uh, Malati was teaching Kannada in one method, Indra was teaching uh, Telugu in another method. I am not sure if Priya was teaching anything, I think she was, but I can't remember what. Um, unfortunately, by the time Amukta came in the second year, uh, we had finished that part of language, that exercise, otherwise Tamil would have also come in. But whatever, you know, the idea was that if we are to try out these methods. So David didn't want to entirely tell us this is a good, bad or <coughs> indifferent method. Try the methods and yeah. see. And of course, we were also reading books. One of the most <coughs> important parts of, uh, you know, things in Nilbagh was the fantastic library that the trainees had. Uh, these were books that partly David had bought and collected, but there was, they were also on loan from, you know, an institutional loan from British Council in Bangalore. And so there was a circulation of those books. And they were really, really, it was a great library. His own library, which was full of books on literature, his and Dori's library, we were, we had access to it and we could borrow books and put it back. It was open. But the library that was there in, in our for us to study from, there was a wide range of, uh, you know, subjects and uh, ranging from philosophy to actual pedagogy to right down to, you know, how to teach maths and things like that. So there was a practical aspect, there was a theoretical aspect and the philosophical aspect. And all this we were, I mean, a lot of the books we were expected to read on our own. Um, we also had assignments around specific books. Uh, but those, they had to be limited because you read a book in two days, maybe three days, then you write something about it, then on the next day you discuss it. So maybe it would take a week. So 
even if we did it every week, 52 weeks, that means only 52 books, but there were many more books there. So the whole point was that we were expected to read many more books, which we did. Of course, some books were read in much more depth. So the uh, educational psychology book and Dearden, the book on uh, educational philosophy, these two were kind of, uh, you know, read chapter by chapter cover and cover, yeah. discussed chapter by chapter. Mm. So there were some books which were read in depth, there were some books which we skimmed and there are some books which we read in our free time, whatever we wanted to read and we could bring it into the discussion or not. So usually the schedule was, which of course varied from time to time, but the broad schedule was that the morning half was in the school. So we either we were observing or we were actually in the class with the, with the children, uh, conducting lessons and all. And in the afternoon, the children went home and they came back later because they did their so-called homework which they wanted to do, which was free. I mean, free meaning it was, op it was optional for children, but they all came. That was later in the afternoon. But in between, we had a short break after lunch, uh, in which we all went to sleep, I'm telling you. And half the time, David would come bang on the door too, because we were dog tired at the end, by the end of it, but never mind. That was also part of, you know, a learning process. And in the afternoon, we had, you know, uh, we had uh, carpentry and um, pottery. And also, uh, we worked with uh, Doreen occasionally on some craft wow. and there was gardening. So the idea really was that we would also learn these things and the pottery was not, it was of course to learn a skill because um, David actually used the word discipline uh, through, a, uh, through the metaphor of doing pottery that the, it's the mud, the clay that is there when you're doing pottery, it's the nature of the clay that disciplines you. Even if you want to go like this, you can't because nothing will happen. You have to go in a particular way. You turn the wheel and you hold it and you do it. In a, so it's the, it's the material, material that is disciplining you. So it is not a, it's a, it's not an imposed discipline like that. Hey, do this, do that. But through the doing of it, it is, it is in fact disciplining you and you're learning a skill. So that's also an interesting way of looking at things because uh, we never think of, you know, uh, we never think of learning something. We often say that which discipline are you following? Yeah. We use it mm. where we mean subject. subject, but actually it's a discipline. So if I'm learning mathematics or I'm learning theater or I'm learning filmmaking or I'm learning economics, the subject itself, the, what, is, the, what the subject is, will also discipline my mind. So, you know, that's another way of looking at the learning, you know, yeah. in a different kind of a way. And that I found very interesting. And I always felt that that's what I should do in the class. That it's whatever is happening in the class, the child is actually learning through that happening, you know, rather than you know, breaking it up and giving it in little bits of, you know, uh, set exercises or, okay, this is what you've learned, this is what you've learned, but it's a more of a process. And carpentry we were doing because we had to make um, uh, teaching aids as well as toys and things like that. It was great fun. So we were doing that, you know, and uh, we do gardening and there was something else we did. We uh, yeah, And then in the evening, we had... Uh, we were supposed to study. Uh, it was so we conference, something like that. Sorry. Conference. It was called a conference. Key. No, it was. There were assignments. Uh, assignments. Okay. Not conference. It was a, conference is a modern word. It was. A, uh, Seminar. No, it was called. A, we did assignments, and it, what happened was that sometimes we read a book and discussed. Sometimes uh, David gave us some, an excerpt maybe, or uh, maybe just a a little paragraph which led to a dis, you know, let raised certain points and we had to elaborate and write it. So it was a written exercise also. That was, that I thought was very good because sometimes, you know, just talking is not enough. Writing it down is also something that helps a different kind of learning and articulation. So there was a uh, written, there were written aspects to it, which of course we discussed and we were reading much more than we were doing this. 
uh, that is definitely there. So, out of all the books that were there, I do not think we all read all of them, but whatever we read was much more than we actually discussed with or wrote about. You know, that is definitely there. The actual study time that happened without David. So, in the evening, we sat with David to do this discussion, this assignment time or seminar. If I, I do not remember it being called seminar, but that whatever. In the at night, uh, we used to have, we lit the Petromax and we studied, which is when we did our write, written work or we read books or, or we prepared for the next day's class or there were different things that we were doing. In the first three months when we were teaching each other languages, that was happening in the morning. So, sometime in the morning, we would also be teaching each other languages, uh, including going to the school. So, that, that, that all that happened in the morning. Then there were also different kinds of assignments, you know. For example, there was a time when we started looking at, uh, you know, maths learning. So, there were, there were these Nafield books, where uh, uh, in a particular way, the numbers and the various, uh, you know, mathematical processes, they were, they were introduced to children. And these were the very early stages of children, this for primary classes. And it was very interesting because it suddenly, you know, made us realize that we've never been taught maths like this. And that's why it is, it, it's actually so easy. And these series I have, uh, I mean, I know how they came about and everything, but that was something I, I realized later on. But it's not really something that is followed in textbooks and not even in the British textbooks, because these were British books. This was, there was a, these Nuffield series they, they had in science also, I believe, and the maths one we had seen, uh, which I remember very distinctly. This was a kind of a uh, learning laboratory, educational laboratory in, in, the, in Nuffield, where many kinds of pedagogical processes were being uh, evolved and f sort of put into place. I do not know whether they were actually applied in many textbooks. Because the problem is that with textbooks, the problem is the moment you have something which encourages self-learning and self-discovery by the child with your guidance, you know, it is very difficult to test and it is very difficult to, you know, control. Because who knows what child will learn, what yeah. might learn something different. So, the teacher has to be open to different kinds of, uh, you know, learning end products, if I call it a product. That is something that textbooks can't do. No? It has to end at the same place and it has to have a test which is common for everybody. So, textbooks in fact became, can be a problem, which is why uh, David's uh, EVS books you know, let's discover science and learning about living, which I think are wonderful. They didn't really do very well in the market because that was the problem that uh, teachers didn't know how to use it. That was the problem. 